Now that we're done talking about the impromptu speech, I want to begin our work on the informative speech with a bit of an overview. So why would you, why should we study informative speaking? Well, certainly in the professional realm, most of the speeches and presentations we give are informative in scope. So you can think here in terms of, say, a research scientist who needs to explain her research findings, uh, or a financial officer who needs to report on qu quarterly earnings for his company's board, or a teacher Teaching is a lot of informative speaking, but a teacher who needs to help students understand differential calculus, or even in sort of the commercial sector, a technical, uh, a technology professional who needs to educate her consumers about uh, a new product or a product's new features. But in all of these cases, you're explaining a concept, presenting new information to an audience. So that gets us into this realm of informative speaking. So what I'd like to do in this overview is talk a little bit about the assignment objectives, talk a little bit about the procedure, what the assignment actually is, and then end by talking about how this speech relates to the impromptu that we just finished with. So uh, I would say, if you haven't already, please do read the assignment overview that's available on the class website. I talk about the issues that I'm mentioning here in, in a bit more depth and some uh, hints on doing well in this particular assignment. So remember, of course, that as we're approaching these speech assignments, we're looking at them primarily as buckets for skills. So I want to talk about the skill objectives that we're going to be working on over the next couple of weeks. And these skill objectives apply if you record and upload a uh, speech for this class, but they're also skills that you want to be able to refine for any type of informative speaking situation, whether you do that inside this class or outside of this class. So what are some of the assignment objectives? Well. By the end of this speech, the informative speech, students should be able to respond appropriately to audience topic and time constraints. So here we're trying to figure out, well, what do you need to say for a specific audience and what can you say on a topic given the time that you have? So we, we're going to think about how to find that balance. You should be able to design appropriate informative speech goals. So here we're thinking strategically about what the audience should be able to take away from the presentation. We're thinking about how you should be able to explain complex topics and evidence appropriately and effectively for an audience. So in informative speaking, your job is to translate complex ideas into an accessible language. And, and this often requires judgment on your part. You should be able to arrange a speech in a clear and logical manner, using performance to highlight this clarity. So you know, you, you've got to think about how you're going to walk people through the information in a way that's easy for them to follow along with. You should be able to extemporize a speech in a manner that adds to your ethos and engages the audience. Uh, and so here, the extemporizing is many, in many ways the same as it was in the impromptu, but now we get into this performative category of ethos. Um, and so in ethos, we're thinking about how are you performing your expertise on the topic? Um, you know, in general, you should know in informative speaking what you're talking about. But when we start thinking about ethos, we're thinking about how can you look like you know what you're talking about. You should. I'm not saying you should know what you're talking about. I'm saying that is a necessary condition, but an insufficient condition for being a really good informative speaker. You should know what you're talking about, and then you should also be able to perform that knowledge so that we know that you know what you're, that you know what you're talking about. So at the end of the speech, you should be able to use delivery to distinguish between key ideas and elaborating detail. So in explaining your content, your burden as a speaker is to help the audience distinguish between big ideas and their supporting details. Um, at the end of this speech, you should be able to speak confidently with appropriate rate, projection, movement, and vocal variety. So this is the same as it was in the impromptu, but now we can discuss these ideas in greater depth. So those are the objectives. Those are the skills I want you to be thinking about and working on in this informative speech. Um, the speech assignment itself should be a five to ten minute speech, and what you're doing is informing or educating the audience about a topic. And as always, the goal in this, in this assignment is to carve out a space for you to work on a speech for this class that equips you with models and skills for speeches outside of this class. And, and we'll take those up uh, later, this, later this week. But for now, let's talk a little bit about how this assignment differs from the impromptu that we just finished. So overall, the impromptu was about mastering a few basic techniques. 
feeling the relationship between evidence and claim. But many of the issues, uh, speech issues, in the impromptu were kind of kept off your plate. So invention, you know, I gave you topics. You could pick your own, but you know, you had these topics. You know what you were talking about. Uh, arrangement, everyone kind of had pretty much a two-point speech, so that arrangement was taken care of. Delivery, well here the focus was on uh, performing the relationship between claim and evidence. So now as we move into the informative speech, you need to start exercising more critical speech judgment. So in terms of invention, you're going to need to find a topic and then dial it in to your audience and the time constraints. And not only that, you need to judge what key points need to be addressed given the topic, time, and audience. In terms of arrangement, you need to identify a logical pattern of organizing this content. Uh, in terms of style, you're, you're walking us through a new concept, you're informing us. So you need to avoid jargon or at least define jargon if you're using it, but then also thinking about how you're using metaphors or examples to help clarify the topic for us. Memory, well this is a longer speech and certainly you should outline it and practice it so that when it comes time to perform it, you don't actually have to heavily rely on those, on those notes. And then we get into the final category of delivery. And given all the complexity that's going on in this informative speech, you need to be able to deliver the speech smoothly. So I want, I want you to think about how you're balancing your credibility on this topic while at the same time being able to perform your interest, your investment in this topic. So what I like about the informative speech is it allows us to focus on this key skill of being able to balance explanation with evidence. And this is often missing in a lot of the presentations I see and people that I work with. So if I'm working with a scientist, they're, usually the problem there is they wander off and they discuss solely the research finding or the specific aspect of evidence without providing that larger sense of what those research findings mean, without providing that context. Business leaders often will have the opposite problem. They'll only talk about the large ideas without necessarily demonstrating them through statistics, examples, and narratives. And this balancing act between explanation and evidence is a fine art, but when accomplished, it really elevates the presentation to the next level. So in the next video lecture, uh, we're going to start talking more specifically about the, the feedback form.